Okay, in five, just a wee video on a couple of examples on similar shapes and finding missing sides. Okay, so the first thing to note is the statement at the top. It says the shapes below are similar, um, and that's important. Um, you have to know that the shapes you're dealing with are similar to apply the mathematics that we're about to apply. Okay, so um, you're going to have to imagine that these are perfectly straight um, sided triangles. I've just drawn them roughly here on my notepad. The first thing you want to do when you're trying to find this missing side in that statement of the game to find the missing side is work out whether something is getting bigger or smaller. Um, in this example here, you can see that we've got all the information on the bigger triangle and we're trying to find the information on the smaller triangle. We're trying to find the missing side on the smaller triangle. So um, when we've got that scenario, what we need is something that's called a reduction scale factor. Um, and we just abbreviate that to RSF. Now, because it's a reduction scale factor we're dealing with, um, that dictates what number goes on the top of a fraction and what number goes on the bottom of a fraction. Um, and we are going to deal with a fraction um, for this example. So um, what you want to look for uh, is sides that are, are alike. So if I look here, I've got the base of the triangle here um, and I've got the base of the smaller triangle as well. So I'm actually going to work with these two uh, sides to work out what the reduction scale factor is. Now, because it's a reduction scale factor, it's the small number on the top, the small base on the top and the large base on the bottom. Okay, um, you don't need to write that every time, you can just skip to the numbers. So the small base is 2, um, the big base is 6 um, and it is a fraction, so we can simplify that, dividing top and bottom by 2, we get one third. Okay, so we now know that this shape here is one third the size of this shape here, or this shape here is three times as big as this shape here. So we can actually use that to find the missing side. And again, just making sure that the sides we're working with are alike. We've got this side here, and that is alike, that is equivalent to that side there on the smaller triangle. Okay, so the next line of working um, is standard. It's y equals, um, in this example, it's the reduction scale factor, which is one third. And then we just multiply uh, the bigger side. So in this example, it's 12. Um, one third times 12 is the same as one third of 12. So you would divide by the bottom times by the top. Um, you don't need to do that. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we get y is, is 4 centimetres. Okay, um, again, we know that the next two shapes are similar. This time we're dealing with rectangles. Again, you're going to have to imagine that all the, the sides are uh, perfectly straight. Okay, so we've got the reverse scenario here. Um, we've got everything in the smaller rectangle and we want to find the, the kind of length or the breadth of the bigger rectangle. So that means what it's going to be is an enlargement scale factor and we just abbreviate enlargement scale factor to ESF. And no prizes for guessing that the formula um, is big over small or large over small. Okay, um, and, and what that means is you get equivalent sides, you put the bigger side on top and divide it by the smaller um, because obviously it's an enlargement. Okay, so if we work that with this, again, what ones are I like? Well, um, the, the length, um, we have the length of both shapes, so we're going to work with the lengths to work out the enlargement scale factor. It's large over small or big over small, so the large number is 7.5, the small number is 5. Um, you may or may not have a calculator for this, um, but I can simplify that by dividing top and bottom by 2.5. Divide the top by 2.5, you'll get 3. Divide the bottom by 2.5, you'll get 2. Um, otherwise, you could multiply and then simplify. Um, but if you don't have a calculator and you've got decimals involved, you want to get rid of them. So like I said, I just divided the top and the bottom of the fraction by 2.5 and that got me 3 over 2. And again, I'm, I'm quite happy with um, the fraction. I, I don't need to, to change it to a decimal. Um, okay, so from there, um, it's an enlargement scale factor. So again, let's look for the kind of equivalent size. We've got the breadth of the smaller triangle. We want the breadth of the bigger triangle. So if I just write that out, x equals the enlargement scale factor times, um, in this example, 2. Again, it times in by a fraction is the same as 3 over 2 off 2. So divide by the bottom times by the top. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Times up by 3 is 3. 
Okay, now, just before we can finish this video, there is a, a check that you can do, um, a very rough one to begin with. I'll look at the first example. Um, it's a reduction. We can see that this, this triangle is clearly bigger than this triangle here. So when I get my answer for y, it's got to be smaller than 12, and it is, okay? Same again for this one down here, um, it, it's an enlargement, so this breadth should be bigger than this breadth here. If it's not, I've made a mistake, and you can see obviously that 3 is bigger than 2. Okay, so um, that's enlargement and reduction scale factor for finding missing sides of a shape.